Happy New Year's Networkers. Another year, a new decade. And in this video, a personal video, I want to show or to reveal to you my top 10 best movies of 2019. Plus, my top 10 movies of the past decade and they will be very different movies that many of you probably have never heard of. So let's get started in this very quick video. Let's first start off with the best film of 2019. And this is a disclaimer. I already recorded this video with my top movies of 2019 a few weeks ago, but there were a few other films I did not see yet. But when I saw those films, they were great films and I drastically changed what that list was. So very quickly, this was my original list, my top 10 movies for 2019. Okay, now let's get rid of that. This here is my updated list of my top 10 movies of 2019. Bam. And here we are. So let's start from the bottom. So number 10 for me, is replicas that movie got bad reviews but i like the ideas of what they were doing the idea of taking what's in our minds and uh, moving it to something else because who we are is what is happening up here so i really thought that was interesting at number nine is ad astra hope i'm pronouncing that correctly um very, if you like science fiction movies that are more gritty and more serious in tone, this is uh, a good movie that does that. Not a great movie to be on the top five, but I really liked what this film was doing and kind of the adventure of going from the Earth up to Neptune and some of the visuals there. I thought that was fantastic. Number eight is The Best of Enemies. That's based on a true story and things I did not know about. So sometimes learning about our history um, does it very well when you do it as a movie. So I thought, I thought that was a good movie with good performances in that movie. Number seven is Knives Out. This is a Ryan Johnson movie. This is what he is good at. Stop doing Star Wars, please. Uh, movies like Looper and Knives Out is great examples that he is a creative person and this is a great movie. It's a great whodunit movie. At number six is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Tarantino at his very best. What can I say? Number five is The Highwaymen. This is a Netflix movie about the chase of the Highwaymen, the Rangers, finding Bonnie and Clyde and how they did that. And of course, the very gruesome death of Bonnie and Clyde, which you do see in that movie. I thought it was done very, very well. Very good movie for me. Uh, number four is The Irishman. Scorsese at his very best. He's really good at making these type of movies of character development, just like Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Irishman is really a great movie. Um, number three is The Joker. That's a very good movie. It is very, the points that were brought up is very, very true. Um, really, we talk about mental illness. That is a real, real issue. I think this is a bigger issue than most people think about. But the performance of Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker was phenomenal. So him getting the nominations, him winning, it is long overdue. I am very happy for him. It's a good movie. Number two is Avengers Endgame. Now this was originally on my top. This was number one on my list. I really enjoyed Endgame more because this was 10 years in the making. There were many films that really was part of this Avengers type thing and I really enjoyed it. I was a big fan of Avengers Infinity War because the idea of overpopulation, that's a topic that I really, really um, think about a lot because I think that's a big problem also in our society and Endgame kind of talks about that a little bit so I really did enjoy Endgame but it was number two because number one was 1917 and it's weird because this movie came out like towards the end of 2019 or 2020 in the beginning 
but it was released in 2008 in 2019 so that counts that movie just blew me away and it was weird because I'm watching this film and I'm going wait a second this is a one shot like you know it's not cutting between different scenes it's just like someone has a video camera and they're just walking around with what you're doing it's just one shot now it does break up a couple of times I think it's two or three times where it cuts but that was fine because of how the film was made to begin with. But it really was such a just, it really felt like that you were going on a journey. You were following along with their mission of what they had to do. And it's a very simple story. There's nothing much to it. They had to get to point A to point B by morning to deliver a message, right? When you keep the story very simple, it makes it more engaging with what you can do with what they're trying to accomplish. And there were a lot of moving parts there. Oh man, the visuals, the soundtrack. If you haven't seen this movie, you have to watch this movie for that experience. It is definitely by far the best film of 2019. It was such a surprise. I did not see this coming. With a film that was basically came out the very last of the last day of the year in my opinion. So by far my best film of 2019 is 1917. Fantastic movie. And by the way, if you've seen Spider-Man Homecoming, no, not Homecoming, sorry. Spider-Man Far From Home, that's the second film. That came out also in 2019. There was a scene, I'll put up the picture here, where there is these two classmates giving the news about, you know, the aftermath of the actual snap and what happened and how it impacted the school. And if you look at, so it shows like a little, you know, like a TV screen that's in the hallway of a classroom. And there's kids walking past in boatloads. If you look right above that computer screen, you see an access point, which resembled, I think like a Cisco access point. And you see the little LED light on it, it is green. Now, wait a second. A green LED on a access point typically means that there is no connected users, wireless users or clients on that access point. Wait a second, this is a high school. They all have cell phones and they're all checking their cell phones. You're saying that no one is using the wireless network. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's for the teachers, the faculty, I don't know. But I got the impression though, like, okay, fine. So there's no teachers on the wireless network. There's no devices that they have, like maybe with iPads or with um, smart televisions or anything like that, that using the wireless network. No one's connecting to that one access point because when you have a connected user, then it changes color. It changes to blue. Um, I actually showed this to one of my kids. We were at a movie theater. Um, no, not a movie, we were at a play, a downtown play. And I said, hey, you see that access point up there? It has a green light on it. Well, I'm gonna make it change blue. So I went ahead and connected to the wireless network. And they're like, oh, how do you do that? Eh, little trick. Anyway, I just found it very humorous for that movie because I'm like, out of all the students and the, and the teachers and the technology, there's no one connected to that access point. Ooh, that's a big fail. And finally, this is my top 10 films of the last decade. And here's the list. And you will probably look at the very first top five and go, I've never even heard of these films. But these top five films, one to five, the first top, the top five there, really, really will give you an understanding of knowing a lot about me and what I value, what I enjoy, uh, what I seek after. Um, they're very different movies because I'm a very different person. I like very different things. But before we get to that, let's get to what my top 10 list is for the past decade. Number 10, it is The Raid 2. Great action uh, foreign film. Number nine is The Social Network. That's the Facebook movie. I like that movie a lot. Number eight is Patriots Day. It's about the Boston Marathon bombing day or the days that follow. Uh, very, very great, very emotional movie. I watch it every year. All these movies I watch every every single year. 
Uh, number seven is Inception. Great movie, a lot of complexities. It speaks my language. I love movies like that. Uh, number six is Interstellar. I love science fiction, space discovery. This movie hits it for me perfectly, especially when it goes to Miller's planet. And my favorite quote in that movie, I love this movie so much. And my favorite quote, my favorite person in that movie is Romley. Um, and they were saying, hey, we need to go down to Miller's planet, which is like a water planet. But it was, but it, it is close to the um, black hole, right? So that's like, oh, black hole. So it changes the, um, so it changes time. Time runs slower on the planet. So they said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, on that planet, uh, one hour is like seven years on Earth. And everybody's like, what? And Romley says, well, that's relativity, folks. It's the little things in life that makes me happy. Um, but I love that movie a lot. Then we get to the top five. And uh, number five is After the Dark. It's like a scenario-based type movie of, hey, you have a bunker. It can fit only 10 people, but there's 20 people. How do you make your decision? I love stuff like that. Number four is Her. It is a Spike Jones film, also starring uh, Joaquin Phoenix and the voice of Scarlett Johansson. I love that movie. I love the look of the, I love the look of the film. I love the music. I love the idea. Oh my gosh, I love that movie so much. I love it each time I watch it. Same for number three, Arrival with Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner. Wow, this movie is, if you haven't seen this movie, you, you should definitely, definitely watch it. It's probably more of the bigger mainstream movie of those top five. But the look of the film, the idea, the music, the characters, just the idea, everything is really good in that movie. I enjoy it every single year. Every time I, I keep watching it, I keep loving it even, even, even more. Um, number two is Hugo. This is, a, this is a Martin Scorsese film, right? He's known for making mobster movies, mafia movies. This is a very different movie about the love of filmmaking. And this is films back in the 1900s. So I love that. Great looking movie, great characters. Everything is so good about this movie. Uh, but number one for me is a movie called Equals. It's a smaller film, probably an indie film. But I, I got connected with this movie very quickly within the first five, 10 minutes. Again, the, the look of the film. Um, the visuals, the music, the characters, the idea, it just, it hit everything perfectly for me. So I tell people, Equals, if you want to really know about me, watch Equals. Now, many people may not really like it, they may think it's slow, they be like, mm -hmm. but that's what I value, it's what I like. But those top five, honestly, is what I value and what I enjoy. So those are, again, are my top 10 films of the last decade. And we are done with this video. Make sure to subscribe and until next time, as always, keep networking and watching those movies.